So starting off, obviously the bench press, this is one of the two exercises, the two compound exercises that I'm really relying on as the main performance indicating variables to showcase whether or not this is working. Now I'm going for four sets of eight reps. Again, this is very basic stuff, but you know what? There's nothing wrong with it. I think sometimes people get like hard-ons for just overly complicated programming. Everybody out there is like, you need to periodize your training. You need to do like three and a half reps and next week do this and this and that and like a deload every 6.9 days and you need to lift 87.5%. I mean, look, I get all that and it's great. Don't get me wrong. I have used complicated training in the past. Hell, I built a whole training program built around that principle. But that doesn't mean it's always necessary. And that also doesn't mean that the basics, we're talking three sets of 10, four sets of eight, it doesn't at all mean that it won't work. For a lot of people, yeah, it will work. It will work damn well. So this is 260 pounds and I'm gonna let this final clip, this is the final set, the final few reps. I'm gonna let this one play raw just for a few seconds. You have to have a very clear vision. Ah! So clearly that was good. I successfully got the weight up, the form was decent. Now, the interesting thing is that if you fast forward, this is my, it was about eight to nine days forward, I actually moved up to, this is 265, and spoiler alert, I got it. I got it once again with a similar level of difficulty, a similar quality of form. And this is where things are starting to get interesting because 265, four sets of eight, this is close to, if not the best I've ever done. And there's a specific number. I haven't talked about this yet, but there's a specific number at the back of my mind and that is 275. And a big reason for this, if you actually look at a video I did, this is early 2020. It was like my, this video was called like fitness heptathlon or something. It was kind of like this fun video I did. I tried to do a 275 pound bench press for an AMRAP, as many reps as possible. I only got nine and that's great, but that's pretty much one set. I know for a fact I couldn't repeat that for two, three, let alone four sets. So now at this point in time, getting close to what I used to do as an AM rep, being able to do that for sets and reps, that's interesting to me. And to take it even further, this is really going back in time. I remember when I was younger, when I was like, probably in like my fourth year of college, maybe third year, I was like 2021. 20, I posted on a Facebook group for my uh, my university and there's like a bodybuilding group and I posted on there like, hey, I'm excited to join this group. My name is Igor, I'm, you know, I've been lifting for a few years. Here's my, my current maxes. And I'll never forget, I listed 275 as the max at that time. And so it's been a long time, but it's just fascinating for me to come full circle. That would be really cool to go back in time and tell like me, little 21 year old Igor, not really little, but tell me back then, hey, you know this thing right now that's just crushing you? This is your one rep max. This is all that you can possibly do sometime in the future, a long ways away. This is going to literally be a warm up and be something that you do for multiple reps and sets. And it's just a regular bench day. So to have that happen, even if it's been so many years, fuck! Yeah. That, again, I don't want to jinx it, that would be fucking awesome. Dumbbell flies is my next exercise. Now, I will admit, I fucking hate this exercise. I do not like the dumbbell flies, the dumbbell incline flies, the dumbbell up your ass flies. I don't care. I don't like this exercise. I feel that there is maximal resistance of the weight at the bottom of your range of motion and minimal resistance at the top because they make you go through a multi-directional movement pattern whereas gravity only works in one direction. I mean, it works, but it doesn't work nearly as well as using things like cables or machines. I actually did a really bad video on this like a long time ago, I think this was like the third or fourth video I ever put out on YouTube way back in 2015. And that video really walks you through a lot more in depth 
as to my reasoning why certain exercises with the free weights, they're just they're just not that good and pretty much the only reason i'm doing this is because again at the time of me filming this i have no choice because we are still in lockdown and my capability to do chess exercises is it's pretty limited i did actually make a do-it-yourself kind of cable fly setup which allows me to do single arm cable crossovers however every time i would do this it would take like 15 minutes to set up and after a week or two i just stopped doing this because i don't want to be in the gym for three hours. Uh, next up, lateral raises. Again, we are doing an overall push workout, which includes uh, includes your shoulders, the deltoids. You may think like, Igor, 30 pound dumbbells, that's it, please. I do, I do 40s or 35s. And to those of you, I say bullshit, okay? 95% of you who are doing more weight than me, more than 30s on the dumbbells, probably not a good idea. And your form, especially in terms of how much momentum you do, is suboptimal, to say the least. I mean, you know what? Don't take my word for it. Here is Ronnie fucking Coleman, back in the day, weighing 290 pounds or whatever he was, doing lateral raises with 40 pound dumbbells. Now, yes, keep in mind, he's probably doing a lot more reps, a lot more overall volume but still he's not picking up you know that much weight compared to i've seen guys in the gym pick up 40s and then just start huh, you know kind of like start swinging the weights no okay no next up fast forward this is the second half of my workout again guys i mentioned a few weeks ago how i'm splitting my workouts into two this allows me to get a a little bit more volume and b it allows me to kind of improve the quality of my workout instead of my workouts kind of just starting really good in the first one two and maybe three exercises and then slowly dying down as i get into exercises four five six this way i take a long break we're talking like eight ten hours and then in the evening i finish up with another two maybe three exercises except now I've had a little bit of rest time, so I'm able to once again train at a much higher level of just overall intensity. So for example, in my case, this is me doing regular bodyweight dips and push-ups. Nothing fancy, but again, after coming back later in the day, after having already pre-exhausted my triceps, my chest, even my shoulders to a certain extent earlier in the day, even just regular bodyweight push-ups, they, you know, for a solid three sets of 25 to 30 reps, with decent form, they actually prove to be fairly challenging. And I mean, yes, some of you guys watching this may be thinking like, Igor, what the hell? You're a, you know, a professional fitness YouTuber, whatever, you know, whatchamacallit. Aren't you supposed to be doing them one-handed or elevated or this or that or sticking your other arm up your ass and reciting the alphabet backwards? <laughs> guys, I have benched fucking 350 pounds in my life and I still get a great workout from regular push-ups, especially if I'm doing them somewhat pre-exhausted. So for the vast majority of you out there, guys who may think that, oh, you know, push-ups are so basic, I'm so above that. Trust me, for the vast majority of you, you're not. Okay, Turk has your own update. What is going on now that we are 30-ish or more days into this experiment? I, I'm actually a little bit ahead, but the footage that you guys are seeing in this video is around day 30, so we'll, we'll catch up, don't worry. Fortunately, the overly fast weight gain that we saw last time, it did somewhat subside, resulting in some actual weight loss over the course of days 20 to days 30. The point is, I'm kind of sitting around 196, and I am happy to see that that initially overly fast weight gain did somewhat subside without me having to like jump into a deficit out of fear of turning into a fat ass. My dosage is still 200 milligrams per day. That's going to be, this is four of these pills, each one being 50 milligrams uh, per individual capsule. Side effect wise, still nothing. In fact, to be honest, like you could just, you could tell me that there's nothing in here but like sugar pills or placebo and I would have believed you because I'm not really feeling anything in terms of side effect. Now, in terms of noticeable effects, in terms of how I train or my strength, well, you know, you be the judge. You've seen my strength progress so far, and it's not bad. Now, how much of that can we, you know, ascertain as being due to the turkesterone? I don't really know. It is better than last year, but then again, I've had pretty damn good training cycles in my life in the past 100% naturally, or, you know, totally nothing at all besides creatine and protein powder. So in terms of how I actually feel, one thing that I can right off the bat say is just not a factor, I've always heard people talk about when it comes to anabolic steroids, and again, this isn't this is not at all an androgenic anabolic steroid, but in case any of you guys are wondering and trying to make these comparisons, let me just shoot this down right now. I've always heard, again, not speaking from personal experience, that when it comes to typical 
steroids, uh, you just feel fucking great. Your pumps are out of this world. Everyone's seen Pumping Iron. You remember Arnold talking about like how he was just like pumped up to the max. Yeah, that's because of Diana Ball, which just gives you insane pumps. Even for like muscle groups, you're not even working out that day. It's just, it's known for doing things like that. A lot of anabolic steroids are going to really kind of help with this. I have had some pretty good workouts recently. Now, that being said, have I experienced this in the past, in previous workouts? Yes, absolutely. So I can't really attribute that. I can't really attribute any overall sensation to the terkesterone. So to be honest, I don't really notice much at all. Again, the only potential uh, benefit is the fact that my workouts are pretty good. My progression has been good, probably better than last year, but also not the best that it's ever been in my life. Again, interpreting all of this is kind of challenging, so do with that information what you will. Whatever this is, honestly, so far, I know it's a, it's a little presumptuous. It's a little early for me to start saying, this feels like this or this feels like that, but maybe it's comparable to like creatine or something. Which is like, yeah, there's a benefit, but it's so minor, you don't even really know it's there. But again, we're only about halfway-ish, maybe a bit past the halfway mark, so I will let you guys know when I have more info. Alright guys, the last thing I want to talk about, this is uh, totally random and off topic, but it's a little bit of like, I guess you can say like a life update. I did a video two-ish years ago when I bought this place, when I bought my condo, and you guys seem to really enjoy that. Even though it was completely not fitness related and it was off topic, it was about just financial concepts of like personal finance, home ownership, and housing prices and all that crap. And so I thought maybe I'd talk a little bit about that today. One of the reasons why it's actually been a little bit of time since I've checked in with you for this experiment, again, sorry about that, is because uh, my girlfriend and I have actually been looking into buying a house. I don't know if you guys know much about this, because again, I think a lot of you guys who are watching my channel are probably a little bit younger, maybe kind of like in your 20s, so maybe some of you guys haven't really looked into like housing prices, the housing market, interest rates, mortgage rates, all this crap. It's bad. So much so that it's starting to freak me the hell out, especially for a lot of Western nations. I'm talking about specifically Canada, where I am, where I think it actually might be the worst. I know in the UK it's very bad, Australia it's very bad, and in certain states and certain cities in America, it's also not that great. Not as bad as it is here, but it has been, it's been bad, and it's been made a lot worse because of thou which shalt not be named, otherwise you might get demonetized. Uh, on YouTube due to a combination of a few factors, but I think really in my opinion the biggest one would be just like rock bottom low interest rates. So you guys probably hear about this a lot. You turn on like CNN or business channels and you always hear like the federal funds rate has been decreased by 0.25% blah blah blah. You guys hear that a lot, but people don't really connect because it's like, well, why would you? Unless you have like an economics degree or you spend hours researching this yourself, you know, loser <laughs> who, who does that. You may not really understand what all of that means, but to break it up like down quickly, the main interest rate set by the central bank of each nation, this is going to make money a lot cheaper. This is going to make it a lot easier to get credit. And because of that, a lot of people who just are, part of it's just greed, part of it's FOMO, fear of missing out, part of it's kind of like I mentioned, kind of the pandemic really pushing people to move from condos and smaller dwellings to kind of like the suburbs and houses. All of this has made this perfect storm of people just buying houses which are expensive as fuck. If you look at some of these charts of the average housing uh, prices that are going for, especially in certain big cities around the world, as a multiple of income, let's say you buy a $500,000 house on a $100,000 income or household income, that's a five to one or five times uh, price to income ratio. Like if you actually track the, uh, the rates of a growth of average income as opposed to average housing prices in many countries, especially in many cities in these big urban countries. We're talking like Vancouver, Toronto, where I live in Canada. We're talking like Sydney, uh, London, uh, Hong Kong is the worst example of this ever. And a lot of big cities uh, over in the States, obviously things like LA, San Francisco, New York. The average price, I believe, of a home, not even like a house, like a detached, big 2,000 square foot house, just a home period. We're talking townhouses, condos, old, new, everything. And Toronto has reached like well over a million dollars now. And the most fucked up thing was that, and this is especially the case in a lot of big cities around the world, just throughout 2020, 
halfway now into 2021, the year over year, one year growth rate in some of these places was as high as 20, 25, even 30%. Who the fuck out there got a 30% raise? Your incomes went up like 2% if you're lucky, if it keeps up with inflation. And yet housing is like, boom, 20, 30%, boom. And everyone's incomes are just like slowly stagn stagnating leads, is that a word? Growing over time. And the crazy thing about this is that nobody has this much money. Nobody has this much money. What people are doing is they are just over leveraged to the max. People walk in, buy houses which are nine times their typical household income. They do it on 5% down mortgages. Pretty much you, you don't even own the house. The bank owns the house and you're in debt up to your eyeballs effectively for the rest of your life. Or hoping that it'll grow in value, which up until now it has been, then you sell to some poor schmuck. If you bought it for a million, he's gonna pay two million in 10 years because it doubles every... I don't know what the fuck is gonna happen. And honestly, I'm not even worried about this as much for myself. I'll get by, I already own a place, I'm already in the market. I worry about the next generation. I worry about, I've got friends who still, you know, they're in their 20s. I've got my siblings are teenagers. So like, they're not babies. They're gonna probably own hopefully in 10 or 15 years. Or at this point, I don't know if they ever will. Or if they do, they're gonna have to like not even leave the city. That's already, that's a given. They're gonna have to like leave the province. Like you have to live in like North Alberta. Like what the fuck is even up there? It's a population of like four. It's like you a snowman and two polar bears. Like I don't, shit, you know? London's had this for like 10 years. It's just kind of, it's just, it's been shit for a long time. And I've actually been working on a big video. This, this is another reason why it's been a little while to upload. I've been working on a video for this because you guys have liked my finance topic videos in the past. So I wanted to do a big one because this pertains to us. Millennials, Gen, Gen Z, is that the next generation? Young people, people under the age of like 30, even people under the age of 40. It's like everyone who was born in like 1985 and earlier, they're just like, raking in the profits. Like my mom's house, for example, has gone up like, it hasn't just doubled, it's like doubled and then some. So it's gone up like 130% over like the last 10 years. That's great. I'm really happy that my mom's like investment has grown. It's helped a lot with her retirement. I'm just thinking, what the fuck do people do in the future? Everybody's gonna either have to be like A, part of the top 2% economically speaking in the entire country, or B, inherit stuff from their parents or get massive loans from their parents. Everybody else, oh, you wanna buy a house? Go fuck yourself. Yeah, that's kinda of what I've been dealing with. And again, I wanna do a big video on this. Let me know if you guys would be interested. Leave a comment down below, and especially if you have any questions or topics or specific things you want me to bring up in that video regarding like the, the economics of home ownership in the 21st century, especially like 2020 and beyond. What cities are you guys in? How bad is it? Has it gotten worse over the past few years? But besides that, getting back onto the fitness side of things, things are looking good. Training is looking extra good. And 275, that big number that I have at the back of my head, it is fast approaching. Faster than I kind of anticipated, to be honest. Um, there is a big sale. I do want to mention there is a big sale on my protein coming up at the end of July. This is actually kind of cool. It's their Clearway Rocket Pop flavor. They kind of launched this for the 4th of July, but it tastes fantastic. So hopefully it's going to be out for a while. As always guys, use my code VITVIP to get you, actually, I think they raised it. It's no longer 40. Now it's 45% off, which is like nearly half off your entire order. So yeah, get some in the summer when it's hot outside. The last thing you want to do is drink some like thick, warm milkshake. Fuck that when you can have like a cold, crisp rocket pop. It's pretty much a liquid popsicle, which happens to have 20, 25 grams of protein per serving. Yeah, it's a personal favorite, as you can tell by how many times I've talked about this. So I definitely recommend it. But besides that, thank you guys so much for checking in. Hopefully the next video will come out kind of soon because this housing stuff is a little bit behind me and now I could get back onto doing what's important, which is this.